We're running a couple of minutes behind. It's okay. We might get started anyway, since Mr. Shoebridge has departed. Um, yeah, he's huffed off. He what? <laughs> he's huffed off. Oh, huffed off. <laughs> Storm I, thought, I thought you said something else. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not with the microphones off. <laughs> Could you please give us your full name, title, they and can hear uh, me in there. if you uh, care to uh, swear either an oath or an affirmation, please. Certainly. Uh, so my name's uh, David Burden. Could you just yep, talk sorry. right into the microphone like this? And I got abused for doing that before. <laughs> no problem. Uh, my name's David Burden, uh, and I'm here on behalf of the New South Wales National Trust. I'll take Thank the you. oath for you. Uh, I swear that the evidence now about to be given by me shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Thank you, Mr. Burden. Would you like to make a short opening statement for a couple uh, yes, of Yes, I would, please. Please go ahead. Hold into us. Uh, so my name is David Burden, uh, and just quickly by way of background, uh, I'm an architect uh, by training and registered in New South Wales. Uh, I'm the current chair of the National Trust of Australia New South Wales Built Heritage Conservation Committee, uh, and I'm here today to represent the National Trust of New South Wales. Uh, as you would be aware, the National Trust acts as custodian of over 30 historic and significant places, landscapes and collections that are spread across New South Wales, uh, including Old Government House at Parramatta. We act in this role on behalf of the people of New South Wales, uh, not just on behalf of our 22,000 individual members. Uh, and in the 2018-2019 financial year, our properties were visited by more than 139,000 people. Uh, to attend tours, events, exhibitions or education programs and I believe this places the Trust in a good position to make comment to this inquiry. Uh, I'm sure that members uh, have reviewed our submission uh, and although the circumstances have changed slightly since we made that submission of course, uh, uh, the core position of the National Trust remains relevant, uh, namely that the Powerhouse Museum in Ultimo should remain open in Ultimo with its key exhibits remaining. Secondly, that Willow Grove and St George's Terrace should be conserved uh, and a design that alternative that retains these heritage places should be considered. Uh, and that Parramatta uh, deserves a new museum uh, that meets the needs and expectations of the people of <coughs> Parramatta and wider Western Sydney. They were our three main points and they remain valid. Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll continue if you don't mind. Yeah, please. Uh, the, the cultural value of the Powerhouse Museum. <laughs> Sorry, I've still got something to say. <laughs> no, no. Exert keep, yourself. Keep going. <laughs> it's getting late in the day. That's okay. Please keep going. Give an open statement. Uh, so. The, the cultural value of the Powerhouse Museum at Ultimo is more than just the buildings, it's also the collection, which of course traces its origins to the 1879 Sydney International Exhibition. Uh, both the buildings and the collections are intrinsically linked uh, by the 1980s development project, which repurposed and extended the former Powerhouse to be used as a contextual and responsive setting uh, for the Museum of Applied Arts and Sciences collection. Uh, I'm sure you're sick of hearing about it, but particular items such as the 1785 Bolton and Watt beam engine, uh, which are operated by um, bespoke live steam system boilers in the basement are prime examples of this. Um, it's been mentioned many times and I've been listening to the inquiry today, but uh, that, that particular item is of, shows the international um, um, prominence of this museum. I mean, that, that engine and Bolton and Watt themselves are on the British uh, 50 pound note currently. It's, an, it's a, a, a very important thing uh, a, and we are very important. lucky to have it. Um, I would just seek to reinforce the role of the museum as defined by the Museum of Applied Sciences Act uh, through the objects and functions of the trustees, which include the display of selected objects arranged to illustrate the industrial advance of civilization and the development of inventions and manufactures, this is quoting the Act, and the promotion of craftsmanship and artistic taste by illustrating the history and development of the applied arts. The closure of the Ultimo site and the opening of an as yet undefined exhibition hall at Parramatta would have, in our opinion, put these objects and functions in jeopardy. The National Trust, of course, support the New South Wales Government announcement to retain the Powerhouse Museum at its Ultimo location, and I note the Minister's commitment this morning to, commit to retain some of those significant items at Ultimo, including the aforementioned being so, engine. So, so we believe. Uh, uh, we would, of course, support any new funding towards the current building stock at Ultimo and its collection. 
Uh, we would urge that in consequence of recent changes of proposed museum at Parramatta, obviously envisaged as a full replacement rather than annex to the Ultimo site, needs to be reconsidered in a way that could facilitate the retention of <coughs> Willow Grove and St George's Terrace as a way of building upon rather than starting out by demolishing Parramatta's increasingly reduced stockpile of historic buildings. That's the conclusion of my Thank statement. you. Thanks very much. Questions? Okay. Um, Mr. Burton, what actually makes, I hear everyone, witness after witness, <coughs> Willow Grove, St. George's Tears, but what actually makes them important and the necessity to preserve them? I think the, the importance of those two buildings, uh, it, it, there's been a lot of emphasis placed on them as individual items. And I think that it's important to consider in the context of Parramatta that not many items have remained. Uh, and obviously we've just seen the demolition of a hotel uh, cu currently in the newspaper as part of the light rail project. Uh, I think that uh, it's, it's the sum of its parts is, is basically my answer to that question. They're both very good examples of their type and they're a bit uh, in the case of the terraces, an unusual type for Parramatta. Parramatta didn't have that many terrace houses built compared to other parts of the city. Uh, Willow Grove itself is a good example of a Victorian Italian mansion. It still has relatively substantial grounds to it. It has its fence to the street. It uh, obviously um, gives some good street ca streetscape value to Phillip Street uh, in the way that it provides a green expanse in an otherwise urban setting. So I think they are well-known buildings. Uh, I think it's also important to consider the social significance, in particular of Willow Grove, being a maternity hospital uh, for a good period of its life. It would have some social significance as well as architectural significance. Um, the, the grounds and setting of Willow Grove uh, are reduced from what they were originally, but still provide a good example, uh, and perhaps better than most, uh, examples of old building stock in Parramatta, particularly houses that have been squeezed between, shall we say, more recent developments in most cases. I think it might be useful, um, just following on if I might, oh, sorry, yeah. um, just to talk, to talk us through a little bit about sort of what are the consequences when we fail to properly preserve these these significant and heritage items. I mean, as I guess my, my colleague was alluding to, there's a little bit of a sense perhaps of, oh, well, it's just, you know, one little house there or a couple of little terraces there. And yes, as you say, they're historic and good examples of their type, but, you know, we soon just, they're not a particularly big deal. Um, and you've talked to us, um, I think, very well about why we should value them. But what are the consequences of us failing to do that? In each little instance where we dismiss or minimise or don't properly value what could perhaps be seen as small items, um, but the cumulative impact of that over time? I think the cumulative impact is the biggest mm. aspect of, of, of any of these proposals. I think, um, you know, there, there are numerous examples and we don't have to look to Parramatta. We could look at Burwood or Hurstville or any other Sydney suburban area where you look at those then and now photographs and you can see a fully intact Victorian streetscape in the middle of one of our um, suburbs, which is now sadly depleted in many cases. I think that some of the, uh, the National Trust has long argued for conservation areas rather than, uh, well, in addition to, I should say, uh, listing of individual items, because the, the actual area is important itself. Uh, in, in my local area, there are not too many local um, conservation areas in the Rockdale uh, LEP, for example, uh, but there are a number listed by the National Trust as conservation areas. Uh, and they don't necessarily have to relate to Victorian era buildings. Uh, I can nominate the National Trust's listing of Beverly Hills uh, as, as a conservation area in some parts for the 1940s sort of thing. And there's a large Catholic church there, which was a war memorial church um, paid for by both the United States and Australian you know, contributions as a, a memorial. So th there's more recent examples of, of these sort of areas as well. And um, I think just wanted to draw you out a little bit on the Ultimo side. Mm. So <coughs> there seems to be some recognition that by the government that, you know, elements of that site are significant and should be maintained. I don't know if you heard the witness before you talking about... Um, 
his view that the, the entire site there um, was of significance and should, should be listed um, as a state heritage item. I don't know if you had a view on that. Uh, yes. Uh, so the National Trust itself has, has nominated um, the Powerhouse Museum. I'm sure you'd be aware of that um, in its entirety uh, for state heritage uh, listing. Uh, the, the Harwood Building, which is the tram sheds, of course, was listed by the National Trust in 1997. Uh, the Powerhouse and the Powerhouse Building uh, were listed in 2015. And in November 2015, the Trust nominated the Ultimo Powerhouse whole site uh, for inclusion on the State Heritage Register. Uh, the nomination was placed on exhibition for public comment by the Heritage Council in March 2020. So that's the current status of that nomination. I would just, um, following on from the previous um, witness, uh, there was a, uh, a comment about the listing of Darling Harbour and the like on the Heritage Register. I would just point out, for um, by way of fact, that the um, Chinese Gardens of Friendship yeah. uh, within Darling Harbour, built between 1986 and 1988 as part of that um, broader project, are of course listed on the State Heritage Register. And I would also just... Don't have an argument with that. Oh, no, I'm the, just... The shopping uh, centre, yeah. I think, is the question. <laughs> I, I don't like Harborside either. But I, I just... <laughs> I, I, I would just also uh, point out, I suppose, uh, that the, the National Trust has long advocated that just because a building isn't listed doesn't mean it's not important. Uh, and there's been a lot of description in the media and whatnot about the local significance uh, of these two items by virtue of their being on the local heritage list. Uh, the Art Gallery of New South Wales is only locally listed. I think anyone here would be hard pressed to argue that it's not a state significant building. Now I'm not saying that St George's Terrace and Willow Grove are state uh, heritage significance, uh, the heritage office itself would of course make that, that final decision based on any submission that's put forward by a member of the community. But I would just make that point, that the level of listing doesn't necessarily indicate the significance of the place. I think I just, I, I asked that question of yourself and of the witness prior because I think that, you know, part of what we're, this in committee uh, inquiry was announced prior to the government's um, uh, change of heart yep. <laughs> in relation to Powerhouse Ultimo. And one of the things that I think is going to be most significant in terms of our work is well, what happens with that site now. And that's a work in progress and the business case is under development. And there did seem to be a hesitation on the part of the minister this morning to make definitive statements um, in relation to the That's site as a whole. The de business case is in development. It's Absolutely, and so I think drawing out some evidence in this inquiry as to the significance of the site as a whole is useful. Um, so I think that that was uh, just wanted to give some context to that question and just in terms of in terms of the future use of that whole site um, and all of the all of the built items in it. I, I can't comment on the current level of funding to the Powerhouse Museum as it sits at Ultimo uh, but as a visitor to the place you're hard pressed not to admit that it's a little tired uh, and that it perhaps isn't doing the best with the amazing collection that it has in terms of um, representing Museum of Applied Arts and Sciences and Decorative Arts and the like. Uh, and of course any increase in funding and upgrade works to um, make the existing site better uh, would of course be welcomed. I'm fine. Thank you. No, I don't have any more questions. No more questions. You were very concise. <laughs> oh, that's very good. Great. Well, we're finishing a little bit early, Mr Bird, unless you want to add more to your previous statements? Uh, no, I think um, that I would just close by um, again supporting uh, the, the government's decision to retain the Ultimo building at, at its at its current site and uh, and to advocate for, for, for funding um, of that site. Um, and if any new museum can facilitate the retention of those two heritage items, which I think are of importance to the local people at Parramatta, then that should definitely be considered uh, because it wasn't uh, in fairness, considered as part of the original scope that the um, present design had to consider uh, when it was going to be a full museum rather than an annex. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, thanks very much for coming. Thank you. <coughs>